folks, Zion Hezekiah here, a.k.a. Hez, Toronto Talk Sports and more. Very pleased to be joined today by the co-founder and managing partner of the tax and business management firm, Players Management Group, Mr. Reggie Blackwell. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me. How you doing? We're doing, we're doing good. How you doing, man? Hey, we're doing well. You know, we're uh, fighting through this pandemic and oh, yes. through all the things that's going on in the world, but hey. I'm safe and I'm blessed. Well, that's what it's all about. It definitely is a crazy world out there for sure. So guys, Reggie is one of the co-founders and managing partners of PMG Intrinsic. Uh, Prior to forming PMG, uh, Reggie was a sports agent and marketing director representing over 50 NFL players and a couple NBA players as well. Uh, Reggie has negotiated over $100 million in contracts for his clients. Uh, Reggie, it's a great pleasure to have you on the show uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for your time. So before we get into all the talk with PMG and the work that you're doing right now, uh, take us back a little bit. Talk to us about your time as a sports agent. Obviously, on this show, we talk a lot of sports. I want to deal with that a little bit up front. Uh, talk to us about your time as a sports agent uh, dealing mostly with uh, NFL players. Hey, well, well, no doubt. Hey, once again, thanks for having me, Zion. I appreciate you having us on the show. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the sports agency business, I kind of grew up in it playing sports. I was a division one, what we call an American athlete, played at Kansas State University, played football, had a little cup of coffee, I call it, with the Kansas City Chiefs, had a free agent opportunity, had a shoulder injury, didn't get out of training camp, so that lasted um, about a month. Okay, what what position did you play? I played outside linebacker. Okay, my man. Outside linebacker. But I always had an affinity for sports, and my career kind of started with Anheuser-Busch, working in sports management, working for the major borough here in the United States, and did a lot of sports marketing, did a lot of Super Bowl special events. And then that transitioned to me taking the leap of faith and say, hey, I one day wanted to represent athletes. And a little bit about the sports agent business, I'm just telling you in the States. And I worked in Canada a little bit too, did some guys in the Canadian football league. Okay, right on. So got a little, um, been up to Canada, a lot of Saskatchewan and in Edmonton and some of those places. But just being an agent was a great, great launching point for me in working with professional athletes. Uh, it is a very dynamic and interesting business, to say the least, uh, one that is very competitive. But having the opportunity to work with professional athletes was always a passion of mine. And uh, being able to help them and guide them and nurture them throughout their career was always something I love to do. The reason why I pivoted over the last um, about seven to eight years into the tax and estate planning and trusts and business management side of the world, it's quite frankly, Zion, I I got tired of competing against the big boys. The CAA, the world, the guns of the world. Um, Those are really the big agencies that have the majority of the clients from a contract standpoint negotiating. Mm. And um, I had several clients, but it's hard to keep them. You know, okay. because the big boys come calling. And, Absolutely. And me being an individual, um, being by myself at the time, working as a, you know, as an agent myself, it was like, you know what, let me find a niche of, of something to still work with professional athletes that was a lane that will fit, that's not in that all crowded space of everybody want to be an agent. And that's kind of sure. how we landed here. Okay, very good. So listen, one of the things that, you know, I've always found very fascinating, um, I believe it was 2009, SI, they released a report stating that 35% of NFL players go bankrupt or experience, you know, financial distress just two years after retirement. And the numbers are even more staggering for NBA players. I mean, it's, it's really wild. Uh, talk to us a bit, Reggie, about the money management side of things and what resources perhaps are now available for professional athletes regarding the management of their financial portfolios. Well, actually, Zion, the number is about 65%. So you live nope. in the understatement. Wow. And it's almost about 70% for the NBA. Oh, yeah. Two to three years, they are are filing bankruptcy. So the number is staggering. Um, Some of the things that we do, and that's why we, the largest expense of an athlete Mm -hmm. across the board, and even someone of their personal income and W-2 earnings is tax. People don't understand that. It's it's not the houses they buy, the cars they buy. The largest expense is tax. Because people see $10 million, and they think it's in $10 
whether you're in Canada or whether you're in the United States, there's what's called tax that you have to that gotta pay. pay the tax man gotta pay the tax man that you gotta pay the tax man so and a lot of people don't understand when you're a high income earner like a professional athlete those numbers are within about 35 to 45 percent of your income yeah nearly half so yeah. Making, yeah so if you're making 10 million you're paying 4.5 to the to the to the tax man if you don't properly manage those expenses mm. So relating to what you're saying, the one thing that we teach and we want to educate and work with our clients is that, look, spend what you like to spend, but have a budget mm -hmm. and save 25 to 30% of your money minus what you have to pay to Uncle Sam, which we call the tax man. So okay. it's a function of making sure your resources are aligned in the right position. You're not overspending and you have a sound plan. And what we gotta understand is Zion, all of these guys that are professional athletes have a short window to maximize their income. Oh, big time. Everything is gonna happen from age 23 till about 32, 33. And that's if they have a great career. For sure. 10 years. As you well stated earlier, the average career of an NFL player is less than three. Oh yeah. That's it. And they want to prepare for after, you know, professional right. sports. So you need to be able to maximize and save your money during this window because you're still going to have over half your life yet, more than half, almost two thirds of your life to go when you retire. So time. how long can that money last? You know, now some people may come out and get a successful job and work and bring in well, but they're not going to bring in the money that they were as a professional athlete, the odds right are not that much, that they're going to make six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars a year. So our thing is to get you to the fourth quarter, but making okay. sure in that first and second quarter that you're prepared. And what I mean by that is minimize your tax, make sure you have a sound fundamental budget, do what you need to do, still enjoy yourself and invest wisely. Now, we as an age, our firm, we work in partners with the financial planners of the world. Okay. So we work in lockstep. We personally don't manage the money. We minimize the tax. We handle the business management side of it, but we don't actually physically manage the money. But we have partners that we work with in guiding them in that. Very good, very good. So I was going to, I know you've kind of touched on it in pockets here and there. I was going to give you an opportunity just to give us in a nutshell um, exactly what you do with uh, PMG. First of all, when was PMG established? Uh, how long have you guys been in yeah, operation? So PMG so? Has, has been established. Actually, this year was our first year as PMG. Okay. But my group of partners, we've been in the industry and in the business. We've got over about 50 plus years of experience. So we just basically came from different um, companies and formed this one to put together from a business management side, from a concierge service side, from a marketing side, and from the tax minimization, bringing tax attorneys, we just came together and formed it as PMG just this year. Very true, very true. And you operate out of California, is that correct? We operate out of Beverly Hills. We actually have a satellite office in Chicago and St. Louis is where I'm at as well. But to answer your original question, the core competencies of our business is tax minimization. So making sure an athlete or a high net worth individual does not pay the maximum tax. An easy example of that, Zion, is when you go to the car lot that you don't pay sticker. The okay. first time the guy tell you, hey, this car costs 50000 you don't just write him a check for 50000 That's right. You try to negotiate to get it down. So what we do is we try to work within the tax laws. We work in Canada and in the United States to minimize those expenses within the confines of the rules that are set forth in, in the United States and in Canada. So we proactively build a plan so that athlete doesn't pay that max sticker price. Along okay. with that, to prepare him or her for that, we have a business management piece that manages his bills, that manages his, well, if he has an entity, a separate company, if he has a real estate portfolio, all those different things that play a part in the tax world 
we have a business management side that manages those pieces. What about <laughs> investments? Does the business management side get involved with investments? No, as well? so the investments, that's the financial planner. Now, oh, okay. if somebody wants to do a personal investment, let's say, hey, Rodney or one of my clients called me up and said, hey, Reggie, I want to invest in this real estate property. We handle the vetting. We do all of the due diligence for them. Oh, very good. And we'll give the educated answer of, hey, is this a good deal or not a good deal? Still leave it up to him to make a decision. Just all in right. case if somebody come to him and say, hey, you know, I have this great idea. I have a barbershop. I want to start this business. Or I have a car wash. So we'll do all the due diligence. We'll, we'll do all the background checks. We'll do all the P&Ls. We'll look at the, all the risk analysis and then give them a decision on, hey, is this something they should or should not do? But oh, taking okay. their liquid cash and putting it in the stock market or a mutual fund, the financial planner ha counts that piece. Very good. So one of the things that I'm always curious about, I mean, I talk to a lot of business owners. I mean, that's what I do uh, professionally as a business consultant. Um, how has, and we talked about this a little bit of, um, you know, before the show uh, began uh, pre-production, Reggie, how has the pandemic affected your business? I mean, I'm sure it's affected you to some extent. There's still things that we can and can't do with all the technology that we have, but specifically how has, um, you know, what's been going on in the world pretty much since early to mid-March, how has it affected you and your business? Hey, you know, we jumped in it right as the pandemic came. So it, it was, it's, been a, it's been a great effect. Um, but we had to be creative, Zion. What, what has happened is Zoom, uh, FaceTime, instant messaging, uh, Instagram messaging, right. video chat, all of those functions have been, been utilized now to do what you need to do. Um, it's still an old-fashioned handshake business to really get some of the big major deals done. But fortunately, we've been fortunate enough to have developed relationships with clients and potential clients over a period of time to where they know us, they know our work, they know our credibility, to where we can still get a deal done via Zoom or DocuSign. So sure. we've still been able to hang in there, maintain the course, Things are starting to loosen back up a little bit, and we will slowly be but out surely, yep. Slowly but surely, getting out, seeing face to face with our clients. But we had to, just like any other small business out there, we had to pivot. Absolutely. We had to be creative. We had to think outside the box. But one thing we needed to stay aggressive. Absolutely. Speaking of what I was talking earlier about investments, it seems like, you know, now would be a perfect time. Well, maybe it's too late, but before, if uh, someone had invested in, you know, any of these yeah, you know, social platforms or um, any of these platforms that allow us to connect, uh, you know, video conferencing or whatever, they're making a lot of money these days. <laughs> well, they're doing very well. They're doing very well. And like I say, this Zoom platform that we're speaking on right now has, yep. been, uh, has been the savior, you know. Oh, big time. Agent. Networks are using it from ESPN to CNN, all the big platforms. So it's been good. For sure. So I know your business is, is new. As you say, you just kind of kicked things off and officially got started earlier this year. What would you say to date, Reggie, has been the most challenging, other than obviously the pandemic and, you know, the ability or the inability to connect uh, with clients, perhaps directly and, you know, travel and this and that. What are some of the challenges that you find uh, that you've uh, faced uh, early in your business? Well, it's always a challenge to get professional athletes, particularly that are age 23 to 28, 29, which is the core group of our clients that the we have. The prime of their career. Correct. To be able to understand the dynamics and how much tax really affect them. I mean, they, so being able to constantly deliver that nexus, being able to educate them and saying, look, if you do X, Y, and Z, you're going to be able to save a significant amount of your taxes. Um, so that's always still the challenge is to be able to look a, an individual in the eye or their advisors to say, look, you're giving away 40% of your money and you're taking minimum deduction. Not to discount whoever your CPA is at the time because somebody had somebody. But their only knowledge stretches so far as I am. You know, mm -hmm. we make the analogy of if the speed limit is 65 miles per hour, I know you guys use the metric system. Up yeah, that's there. right. right. Miles kilometers. Miles. Yep. You use kilometers. Um, but we use miles per hour. Sure. If it's 65, we drive 69. 
-hmm. And what I mean by that is we're going to push it right above the, the speed limit. We're not going to break the law, though, to where we'll get a ticket. And that means get a ticket from the government agency saying you're doing something wrong. Okay. But a lot of times, the contrary, meaning the CPAs or some of those other individuals, they drive 50. They drive way too slow and way too mm. conservative. So they don't take advantage of all the possible um, advantages and tax advantage opportunities gotcha. that are out there than, than what our tax attorneys do. Gotcha. So the biggest challenge, once again, is to be able to articulate that message to young individuals to say, look, instead of you paying 40% in tax, if we get you down to 25%, that's a 15% saving. Okay, 15% may not look like that much, but let's put it in real perspective. Oh, yeah. You make $10 million. So you would have paid $4 million in tax. Now you're only going to pay $2.5 million in tax. That's a $1.5 million savings in more money in your pocket yep. in one year. Let's multiply that times a 10 year career. If you do get 10 years, just on average of saving that amount, you know, we're talking about $11.5 million of extra money in your pocket of free cash that, that you would have just gave away, not meeting us if you didn't meet us. For sure. Thank you for, uh, for clearing that up. Um, at this point, I want to actually bring in, uh, we've been talking about, you know, clients and working with, uh, you know, the various persons that you work with. We're actually going to bring one of your clients on the show. Uh, joining us is uh, one of Reggie's clients. Uh, we're very happy to welcome defensive tackle for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Mr. Rodney Gunter. Fourth and goal from the one. Wilson takes the snap. Play action and Wilson is sacked back at the 10-yard line. Never had a chance, Rodney Gunter. Thank you for having me, man. So, first off, Rodney, uh, how did you and Reggie initially connect? How did you guys originally uh, get together, business-wise? We connected through a mutual company. Uh, Reggie used to work for um, ETA, was it? ETA, yeah. Reggie? Yeah. And, okay. Uh, from from then, Reggie was like a thorough guy, stand-up guy. He kept it real with me, honest with me. Uh, also, he's like a mentor to me. So I take, you know, I take, you know, it, Reggie's like a full. OG, big brother, father. Love it. All that, man. Great guy. Excellent, excellent. Good stuff. So um, I'm sure you were in the background. You heard Reggie and I kind of discussing money management for professional athletes. So you've been in the league, Rodney, now for about six years. Um, what are you specifically doing to ensure that your money is properly taken care of? I mean, obviously, other than working, uh, of course, with, with Reggie and his company. And another specific question that I have is, and we hear about this all the time, you know, pro athletes, you know, you come in and you get your first, you know, contract or perhaps your first big contract. Um, I believe you're signed now, if I'm correct, uh, three-year deal, $18 million uh, with, with the Jags. Um, is, is, that, is that right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, man. That's correct. <laughs> so w one of the things that I'm wondering, and we hear this all the time, Rodney, is, you know, family, cousins, second, third cousins coming out of the woodworks and people, you know, asking for money. Like, does that actually happen? And, you know, how often are you hit up for, you know, hey, buy me a car, you know, loan me a this and that. How do you deal with that? Man, I've seen it all, man. I've seen it all. <laughs> one thing I do with it, man, I just probably just put my phone on not disturbed, I just <laughs> <laughs> just ignore them. I just I just know them, man. It's, it sounds it's it's like it's hard, like but sometimes I have a good heart, so I have to ignore people because they hit me they hit me with all type of stories, all sad stories, sob stories. It just sometimes it's draining mentally. Seriously, it's draining. Right. A lot of family coming from out of nowhere. Oh, I'm the third cousin, the second cousin. You know, uh, I really need you this month. It just it's it's, dra it's very draining, man. But like I've been having a I've been having I've been dealing with money since I was 15 years old. I have a job, been saving okay. money. Like I, and I'm good with pretty saving money. You can ask Reggie. Reggie can vouch for me on that. All right, all Definitely. right. Definitely. So, I mean, so, I'm and sure. And to, and to echo on, and to echo on that, Zion, you know, Rodney is a, a and I appreciate the kind of word. He, Rodney, Rodney is one of the clients that get it. You know, okay. He, he 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 gets it. He he he's still young. He likes to have a good time. Sure. He likes to have a few toys. But he understand the evidence of saving. And, and, and he let us be the bad guy sometime. Hey, you know, I'll tell Rodney, have him call me. 
if somebody wants to start this business or somebody want to do it, let them let them let them talk to us. We'll right. let it go. We'll be the bad guy because so you're right. that responsibility. Yep, yeah, that's that's a good way to do it. Yeah, yeah, because right. Rodney, you know, he's just like me. He grew up in an African American family, you know, in the neighborhood. We got a lot of cousins, and and I'm I'm came up the same way, and I think that's oh, why yeah. myself and Rodney is able to mesh because we understand those dynamics and we never want to abandon our family but we know we only can do so much so i think rodney has done a good job of being able to balance what he can do properly save and then say no when he needs to and i think that's i think that's the key is 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 balance because i think about a guy like mike tyson and all the hundreds of millions of dollars that he made uh during his playing days and he you heard a lot of interviews that he's done talking about you know buying houses for this person cars for this person and you know taking care of his whole entourage that was probably like 30 50 people uh deep and a lot of people just you know in his ear and constantly you know spend 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 right 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 that's one of my biggest pet peeves somebody taking advantage of me Oh, you don't want it. that? No, no, no. No, no, absolutely not. So I kind of like just avoid that energy. I just like just cut them off. Cut ties with them. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. So, uh, so Rodney, uh, you're how old again now? So what? How old are you again right now? I'm 28 years old, man. Bless and so t- healthy. 28? You're, you're in your prime. So even at the tender of 28, how f- much do you look to the future and, you know, after, after football, after your professional career and talk about or think about, you know, the things that you want to do when you're late into your 30s and when you're into your 40s? So just having that big picture from a financial perspective, how much time do you actually spend dwelling on that? Well, man, I spent a lot of time thinking and just thinking about my future, thinking about my retirement, thinking about how when I'm going to have a family, like, we're going to live comfortably, live, like, you know, nice and just be able to do what I want to do with my family. And uh, I was fortunate to go to earn a scholarship to college and I earned my business degree. So outside of football, I'm going to take, my, take pride in business and I'm a businessman. You guys, Reggie, let me tell you about that. So, Excellent. um once I retire football, I'm going to have like, you know, multiple businesses and I'm be an entrepreneur. Love it. Yeah. Also, I'm going to have real estate property, all that, you know, a few, a few investments in the stocks, stocks market. Reggie, sounds like he knows what he's doing. The man's got a good head on his shoulders. That's good stuff. No, I love he's to hear been, that. Uh, he's been listening. You know, that's the key, Zion. And, and he understands what he doesn't know, but he does have a very clear head to have multiple revenue income streams coming in right now. You know, I always joked with him because I've known him when he was making $565,000 a year. You know, mm-hmm. his career has transitioned over the last few years to where he's been in a blessed position now to where Excellent. he's really able to do some things that he want to do. But he still got the same humble mentality as when he was making five hundred grand to where he's making today, which is, which is good. Perfect, perfect. Now listen, Reggie, as we wind down here a bit, what's next for PMG? So I know you're just kind of getting the ball rolling, getting things started. When you look into the future for your business, for your enterprise, PMG, where do you see things in the next, let's say, five to 10 years? What's the vision for your business? Yeah, and the vision for our business is to be um, the world leader in what we do. American, mm. It's basically tax, business management, marketing, business incubation, we want to be the world leader. Um, we want to be the new CAA in our area. I we love that. We want to be the new octagon in our, mm. in our arena. So we're Beautiful. well on our way. Rodney is one of the clients. We should be, in the next five years, we should be um, 200 plus clients um, worldwide by then. And um, in all sports, football, basketball, hockey, baseball, and all the major sports and, and boxing as well. So that's the direction where we want to go. And we want to leave an impact, Zion. So when I look at this thing 10 years from now and Rodney's retired and Rodney's set up well and he's generating income coming in from all over, he's not going to be in that to stick with that pool that we're saying, hey, 70% of all athletes is broke. He's going to be on that on that 30% side that's not broke. Then I've done my job. Love it. Love it. Well, listen, reach for the stars. Uh, 
I love what you guys are doing. Uh, this has been a great conversation. Uh, Rodney, we do look forward to doing a full feature on you uh, right here on the show at some time in the near future. I uh, definitely want to wish you all the best in the upcoming NFL season. Go out there and uh, do what you do best. Uh, Reggie, it's been a pleasure uh, doing this feature. Any final words that you want to share uh, before we officially close out? Hey, I just want to say thank you for having myself and Rodney. We appreciate you. Uh, we're looking forward to getting up to Canada soon. Uh, maybe Rodney, when he get in the off season, we definitely can visit Toronto. It's a it's a nice place to visit, Rod. Trust me, Toronto's okay. good. Also, <laughs> I've never, I've never, I've never been to Toronto. I'm looking forward you, to come out. Have you been anywhere in Canada, Rodney? No, sir. Not oh, okay, not yet. Okay, okay. I'm looking, I'm yeah. looking forward to come out there, man. Very, so, very soon. Add that to the bucket list. I know, obviously, things are really you know dicey in the world right now with the pandemic and a bunch yes. of other stuff uh, going on. Uh, but the border will eventually open up and things will eventually get back to maybe some kind of a new normal. So we definitely will uh, welcome you both uh, to come up here uh, with open arms. Uh, guys, continued success. Thanks again for joining us. As I said, Ronnie, we look forward to doing uh, an exclusive on you at some time in the future. Uh, talk about your career and all the wonderful things that you're doing. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, uh, both of you. Uh, thanks to our audience for tuning in. I'm Zion Hezekiah, and this is Toronto Talk Sports and more. Thank you for watching. Please click the like button and leave us a comment with your feedback. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications to see more engaging and interactive content. Toronto Talk Sports and more for the love of the six. Let's connect.